In this video, we're briefly going to introduce the notion of area in polar coordinates. So first, let me give you the formula. So the formula for area in polar coordinates is the following. So it's A equals 1 half, and we're going from the angle alpha to the angle beta of r squared d theta. So this is the formula, and this is the area, is the area of the region bounded by so r which is a function of theta and the angles theta equals alpha and theta equals beta here f is continuous and you know this is traced out exactly once. You have to be very, very careful when you're working these problems out that uh, the region you're, you're finding the area of is traced out only, only once. The idea behind this formula is pretty simple. I'll just give you the general idea so you kind of can see where it comes from. So in math, uh, there's something called a sector. So I'll show you what that is. So the area of a sector, so area of sector, is A equals one half theta r squared. So you might say, oh, you're starting to see like a resemblance here. You see the one half, you see the r squared. So what is what is a, a sector? It looks like this. It's the sector of a circle. So something like this. This is a little wedge, like a piece of pie. It looks like a piece of pizza, actually. <laughs> so this is theta, and this is r. So this area of a sector would be given by, by this formula. And so the idea is that we have you know, an actual graph. So here's the axis, coordinate axis. And we have some, some region that we're trying to find the area of. And so what we do is we break it up into lots of little sectors like this. So it's like we're taking a piece of pizza and we're cutting it up into little thin pieces. <laughs> so you could think of these little angles here as delta theta. And so you have infinitely many of these basically and that turns into a definite integral. So your delta theta basically turns into a d theta, loosely speaking. Your one half gets pulled out and your r squared remains. So it's very similar to the construction of regular uh, integrals via rectangles, right? The area via rectangles that we do in calculus one, except here we're doing it uh, via sectors. So same idea. So these problems are really tedious to do, uh, I think. Uh, you know, most of the time when I do these, I take the easy way and I do, uh, I do it with the calculator. Let's do one example though, in this video, where we do it by hand. And in the videos that follow, uh, we'll just you know, we'll, we'll cheat and we'll use the calculator. So let's find the area. So find, find the area. And let's maybe just do the area of, find area of the interior, so the whole thing, of r equals 3 cosine theta. So doing these problems, um, you know, does require some, some foresight sometimes. For example, I know that this is the graph of a circle. So I, I just know that. You could easily turn it into the graph of a circle uh, by uh, squaring both sides, or rather multiplying by r. But for now, let's pretend we didn't know that. Let's pretend we didn't know it was a circle. So one way to do it would be to make a table of values. So here's theta and here's r. Oh, and by the way, you already have r. So you might be wondering, what are we even doing? Don't we just have to plug in the r? That's correct. All we have to do is plug it in. The problem is that we don't know alpha and beta. So the hardest part of this problem is figuring out the alpha and the beta. So let's just start with zero. So how about we just do zero, pi over four, just picking some random nice angles, pi over two, and um, let's just do, uh, I could do 3 pi over 4, but I'll just do pi. All right, so let's plug these values into our r here, and then we'll see what we get. So let's see. When theta is 0, we'll get r equals 3 times the cosine of 0. 
cosine of 0 is 1, so we just get 3 times 1, so we get 3. So I'm going to put a 3 here. When theta is pi over 4, we get r equals 3 times the cosine of pi over 4. So the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, so we get 3 root 2 over 2. Let's put it over here. 3 root 2 over 2. When theta is equal to pi over 2, we get r equals 3 cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 um, is 0, so we just get 0. So we're at 0. And last but not least, uh, when theta is pi, we get r equals 3 times the cosine of pi, going kind of fast. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so we get negative 3. Okay, let's go ahead and carefully attempt to uh, plot all of these points and see if we do indeed get a circle. So here is the uh, axis, and here is the other axis. And if you have a calculator, um, again, I'll show you a way in the videos that follow where you can just do this entire problem in your calculator. It's totally worth uh, doing stuff like this in your calculator. It's much easier. So let's see. We have theta is 0 and r is 3. So first we travel a distance of theta. So we basically uh, go nowhere because theta is 0. And then r is 3. So we're out here at 3. So this is our first point. Here we have theta is pi over 4 and r is that. So um, that's a number smaller than 3. Um, so that's going to be uh, something like up here maybe, like right here. right? Because uh, theta uh, being pi over 4 will put us you know, up here. All right. And then uh, when theta is pi over 2, we're up here at this angle. But r is 0, so we're down here. And when, when theta is pi, we're over here at this angle, right? Pi is way over here. But r is negative 3, so it puts us back over here. So it's doing this. It's creating a circle. Again, let me go over it one more time. So the first point, theta is 0 and r is 3. So I'll graph it here by itself so you see it. So that's this point here, right? Theta is 0, r is 3. That puts you here. The second point, I'll do it over here. You travel pi over 4, and then your r is some positive number, so you're here. So there's your first point, there's your second point. Your third point, theta is pi over 2, so you're up here. But r is 0, so you're just stuck down here. So here's your third point. And your last point, theta is pi, so you're over here, okay? But r is negative 3, so you go the other way, so you're back to where you started. That means we must have gone down this way and traversed a circle. So from 0 to pi, the entire thing is traced out. So this gives us our limits of integration. Recall the formula is equal to 1 half alpha to beta r squared d theta. So it's 1 half, and then we're going from 0 to pi, and then r squared. So r, r in this case, is 3 cosine theta. So it'll be 3 cosine theta squared d theta. So you see, it's really important that you figure out that it's traced exactly once between 0 and pi. If you just put a 2 pi here, it's going to get traced out twice, and, and you'll get twice the area. So I'm going to skip the work here. Basically, to do this, you would use, uh, you would use this identity here, but just to keep this video short, and just to mainly give you the, the formula and the idea behind doing it by hand, uh, if you work this out, you will get 9 fourths pi. So. I hope this video has been helpful, and the main thing you should take away from this video is the formula, right? You want to memorize this formula. Oh, it's right here, and it looks much cleaner, so memorize this. And again, the hardest part is really just figuring out the alpha and the beta, and one way to do it is just brute forces. Just plug, plug in a bunch of numbers, brute force, and see what you get. Good luck.